Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. I've just been to the transfer station and found a few goodies in their e-waste bins. This one's a Yamaha tuner. Uh, it might be worth getting going. So we'll put it on the test bench here, check it out. Cosmetically it looks pretty good, there's no issues. Don't know if it used to have a remote control or not, I might have to check on that. But Yamaha are a great brand and it's worth at least testing because then we can probably sell it. Otherwise um, we've got to work out if it's worth spending time on. All right, first things first, and with all these electrical items, you can't be too careful. I run them all through my uh, Mini Pet, which is a portable appliance tester. And so the power comes through that. And also in line, I run a, uh, an RCD, which is a residual current device. So that will protect me if there's any shorts and the test will actually tell me if the item is electrically safe. All right, so we'll turn the unit on. And we'll see what we've got here. Power. Oh, okay. We've got nothing. Sort of saw a flash. Oh, there we go. So if I hold the button in, it works. When I release the button, it goes off. So there's obviously some issue with the switch, which is possibly why it was thrown out. So if I hold the button in, to power it up, my um, tester tells me that it's a pass, it's a class 2 item, we don't need to worry about the earth because there isn't an earth, so it's a pass, so it's safe, we'll just pull the cover off and have a look at the power switch, it might be an easy fix. Okay, there's not much in these things, we have a basically a main board and a power board, and then there is a control board behind the front panel and the switch I've just taken out two two screws that hold it in is um just a simple on off switch but it doesn't seem to be actually staying in so there possibly is a little clip broken in there so I might just take that metal bracket off and just see if there's anything I can do to fix it so here's the inside of the switch um, I couldn't see anything definitely broken, but all these little pieces fell out um, and there's a little bracket here that I couldn't work out where it went. So look, it's a matter of, um, I don't want to waste too much time on it. Um, economics come into play here. If I'm only going to get $20 for the item anyway, I certainly don't want to muck around and spend an hour trying to work out where the little bits go. However, I can really easily just put a test lead across those terminals to power the unit up. Make sure it works. If it still isn't going, then that's fine. Problem solved, I just scrap it. But if it does work by bypassing the switch, then I have the option of just fitting a basic toggle switch into the hole. And then the uh, item, you know, with five minutes work to just solder a toggle switch in. Uh, it doesn't really matter how it looks. Um, as long as it's reasonably neat and then it's going to be quite a functional tuner it might be good in the shed so um, I'll test the thing first to make sure it actually works and then if that's the case I'll put it aside until I find a toggle switch should be an easy fix then so for the purposes of a, a quick test I've just put an alligator clip across those terminals to basically bypass the switch I've made sure it's not going to flick around and short out or anything like that um, so now we can Turn on our power, and it should be on. There we go. It lights up okay. It's actually on a local station there now. Um, but we'll just check the tuning. Yep, the functions seem to work. So whilst it's on that frequency, I've um, rigged it up to just a little old amplifier I have here with a couple of cheap speakers. So we'll power the amp up and we should have a radio noise. There we go. So that's proof enough. We know that the unit now is in functional condition other than the switch. So I'll um, pack it up for now and when I find a suitable toggle switch, I'll fit that and we'll have a saleable unit. Well, that didn't take long. Um, I was scrapping at an old uh, stereo system just the other day and 
I thought this switch looked familiar and it's pretty much identical to the one I've dismantled here uh, and it's um, rated at 250 volts so that will be perfectly fine 5 amps so this tuner won't draw 5 amps so that's all good um, this one was wired to a short loom and a plug uh, and this one the original here was uh, mounted on a little board but uh, that'll be easy I'll just unsolder that one and um, clean those contacts up and I might have to drill the holes out of whisker and then solder it in and we should be operational and there we have it the uh, replacement switch mounted there um, I drilled the holes out just to whisker and just fold the terminals down a bit so that they fit through snugly and all I have to do is solder that it'll make a nice neat solid joint and uh, I can put this back together and there we go, all back together very easily. Um, my soldering job is even, I think, neater than the other end. Um, switch is in, mechanically works fine, and it stays in, whereas the other one actually didn't. So we'll power the unit up, turn on my supply, and turn the switch on, and there we go. Beautiful operational all fixed you'd never know and I did just check the old switch just to make sure um, it was very hard to read and I'm not sure if you can read it through the camera but I think that was about it was 250 volts and 4 amps so the one we put in was rated 5 amps that's that's great you, you got to have um, you get you can't be under the original one but if you're over it will uh, it'll handle a load easily so there we go, all fixed. I can put this the cover back on and uh, whack this one in the shop. We'll get a, uh, just maybe check eBay for a price and just see if they sell. I'm sure they will, but um, whether it's worth eBaying or not is what we have to check. So let's do a bit of research. Okay, let's have a look on eBay and see if we can find this tuner. We'll search Yamaha. And we'll just add the model number, which was TX... 497 now there's lots of different ways to search things on ebay i might do a separate video on research because um it can be quite confusing and there's lots of little tricks you pick up over the years so i didn't search radio because some people would have put tuner uh, some put might have put stereo it just depends totally on what the sellers put in their title but they're guaranteed to have put yamaha and most people that are serious will put the model number so that's all i've searched and we've found one here. Uh, there's none in Australia. This one's in France. Uh, and they're looking for 54 or the equivalent Australian dollars at 5486. Um, so let's go to completed items. There's no more on there. Completed items. There's one. This one has sold. It was a buy it now price for 7492. And it was in the US. Uh, it's not a great gauge on what they're worth because if they are, let's say they are rare, I know they're not because I've already seen two of them, but if they were super rare and someone listed it at buy it now, well, of course it's going to sell and it would have just sold for whatever price they listed it at. Um, to get a good value on something, you really need to see multiple bids because then you know it reaches a market value. So I will do a separate um, video on uh, market research on eBay because there is a lot of tricks to it. Anyway, that sold $74 Australian. Um, that gives me some hope that it's going to be sought after. There's no more there. Um, we could search for in different countries. Where are we? We're actually just in... Well, it hasn't even selected a locality, so let's tick worldwide. Still only brings that one up. We'll go back to take completed items off, go back to live auctions. Okay, so there's only the two on there. This one is a buy it now and it hasn't sold, so that tells me that they're definitely not rare. The other one sold for 70 something, one bid. Uh, postage is also an issue with eBay. Uh, I reckon based on that, I'm going to put about $50 on this. And uh, because if you buy it from my shop, of course, you don't have postage. So I think it's obviously a uh, unit that people. Uh, want so we'll put 50 on it and that's pretty good for just a quick fix of the switch and uh, yeah should make a sale 
Okay, just to finally wrap up this video, uh, the tuner didn't actually make it to my shop. I've got a little test bench out the back here, the back of the shop, where I um, test all sorts of gear. And I didn't have a tuner that, uh, I didn't have one that I liked. And uh, this one's quite a nice little unit. So it's now sitting next to my vintage amplifier, which I use to test all sorts of things. Um, working beautifully. Let's give it a quick run. Turn it on. Turn the old amp on. And there we go. Fabulous. Really happy with that one. And how satisfying is it to save something that actually had been thrown out? It was in the e-waste crate set at the transfer station. I've managed to save it, fix the switch as you've seen. It's now got a new life. And if I do decide to part with it, it's certainly, I think, a $50 piece to go in the shop. So thanks for watching. I'll be doing some more of these. If we can't fix them, we'll scrap them out. So we'll get some value out of them somehow and keep them out of landfill. See you later.